you guys ready? Let's go. I'm your host, Diesel, with Destructive Asylum 13. So today I'm going to show you guys how I weld and fabricate these eyeliners for family trucks. But before I do that, let's look at some pictures and some blueprints. So the Palin trucks have six different idle arms and uh, they're numbered to distinguish what number the idler is. Can you guys see it? Can you see it? Nah, I'm just playing. What's the point if you can't have some fun, right? Anyway, so uh, I'm, I'm welding up a number one here and I'm going to reference this number one uh, for the orientation of these bushings. This is for the post. This is for the top plate, hole locations, and bore sizes. And that's the bottom plate. Now this all gets machined. And then it comes to this guy for the fun stuff. So you guys ready? Let's get it. So that's how it goes. So I'm just gonna put a little mark here. So I'm gonna chamfer this edge. And chamfer this edge and this edge. Using a die grinder here and a carbide burr bit and making a quarter inch chamfer on the boards so I can one a flatter weld bead profile and two chamfering ensures that the connection of both work pieces will be improved and in addition to yielding a stronger weld. All types of steel can develop residual mill scale from production. I always remove the mill scale because its presence can contribute to corrosion and can ruin a weld. The scale will eventually chip and break the coating surface, allowing moisture to penetrate. It is also a hindrance to applying paint or powder coating. So I got all my champers in. One, two, and three. So I can tack two of these in and weld, fully weld them while they're on the table because it's easier to weld them while it's here. And then we'll move on to putting the post onto the bottom plate. I'm gonna tack that in place. Once that's done, we're gonna bring it over to the jig, set it all up, put my top plate on, tack that, and then we're good for weld. Everybody, this is your favorite rock and roll welder, Mr. Sawblade Head. I'm here to tell you about the Yes Welder MP200. Now, this little beast of a machine is perfect for all you DIY and all your maintenance projects. As this thing is a 501 multiprocessor welder. This thing will do MIG, gasless MIG, TIG, stick, and plasma cut. And for all you multitaskers out there, this thing will actually weld and plasma cut at the same time. Now this has a large 4.3 LCD colorful screen. It's actually one of the best displays that I've seen in any welding machine out there. And with Synergy Control, by choosing different thicknesses or amperage, it will automatically change the voltage and wire speed. With built-in hot start, arc forces allow welding with E7018, E6011, and E6010 cellulose electrodes. And with the smart memory function, this stores all the current settings in that particular welding process. You get 10 presets per welding process that you can recall at an instant. And speaking of recall, the MP200 can do a full reset. You can switch between your units of measure between imperial or metric. Dual voltage is a machine will run on 220 or 110. Stick around for my upcoming video where I get to use the S welder in my upcoming project and really run this through its paces. Um, I'm really excited that what this product has to offer. It's really a turnkey solution for you know any starter, welder, fabricator, or something just to have in your arsenal itself. This thing is for the bang for the buck. This thing is a, a grand slam in my opinion. So stay tuned and don't forget to download the Weld app and I will see you soon. So now I can put my bushings in. I'm gonna leave this bushing out because I'll show you when I have to uh, put this on the jig. If I weld this bushing in now, it will not sit properly. So I usually leave this bushing out. I can weld this in place and I can weld this side in place. And then I just gotta weld the other one after, which is fine. 
I like to do this step now while it's on the table because it's way easier to weld on the table than when I have it put all together. So I'm not sure if I mentioned to you before, but these bushings are 4140. So I gotta do a preheat and then weld. So I'm gonna preheat them now and then we'll get to weld them. After doing some research, I learned more about 4140. It has taught me 4140 grade is a low alloy steel that contains chromium and molybdenum. It is a versatile alloy that has good combination of strength, toughness, corrosion resistant and wear resistant. And that's the reason we use it for wear resistant mainly. 4140 is most commonly used of the high tensile strength steels. Any material ranging from quarter inch and up needs to be preheated to about 400 to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. This ensures the weld quality and reduces the occurrence of cracking. Back to trial and error experience, I never used to preheat the bushings and they would come back with cracks in the welds. I decided to try and preheat the bushings and the cracks in the welds were not an issue anymore. I'm using a 1 8 7018 rod and here we go with the no look. And uh, also using the Yes Welder 205DS. I'm running approximately 130 amps. I got my side chamfered there and I cleaned up some of the middle scale where I'm going to be welding. So now it's time to get this post in the hole. It's something I have no trouble with. <laughs> Got to love it when it fits in nice. So I'm going to give this a few tacks. So I made these really easy tools for myself. Measurement tools so I can center and get it where it needs to be instead of every time getting a tape measure and figuring this out. And then we're good to throw it onto the jig. So this is the jig that I use. And then uh, for each idler arm, I have to either set it here, this post, or put it here. We're gonna put this top plate on now. If you recall earlier in the video, I explained why I didn't weld in that one bushing. This is the reason why, so it could sit flat on that post. If the bushing is welded in, it will protrude out the bottom and you will see a gap there. So now that I got this done, I can put the bushing in and it floats to the top. So this gap will be at the top of that bushing. Put the pin in so it keeps everything in position. Okay, so this bushing will go in here to tighten the movement. That way you have minimal movement sits in its spot and I'm going to give it a couple of tacks up here when doing a restart I strike the arc just a little bit forward for where I stopped and then push back a bit and then start my wells and keep going all the way through till I finish that way it looks like it was just one pass. Give this a quick preheat. Again, for maximum penetration. <laughs> also another reason for me preheating, uh, it's a thicker, uh, metals so to reduce the chances of cracking
As you see me coming around here, you can see I'm keeping a nice tight arc length. As well, a nice slow steady travel speed. finished painting this iron arm. This was the final stage. Once it dries, it's ready to be shipped. If you guys enjoyed this video, please join me and most just like myself on the well guy. Four welders, five welders. Hope to see you guys there.